Hi, good evening. Good evening, people. Good evening, Facebook. Good evening, everyone. It's an amazing Sunday evening. To God be the glory for this wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us on the show again this evening. I would like to add my guest now. Okay. All right. So we are live. Thank you so much, guys. Happy Sunday. You're welcome, Sister Yemi C. Lawal. Thank you very much for agreeing to be my guest on the fifth episode of the Beautiful Branch Book Show. It's so amazing to have you on the show this evening. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so basically, we'll be talking about our book today. Yes, an amazing book that I actually had the opportunity to go through too. So I can tell you for free that um, when you're looking at the Francine Rivers of our age, you're looking at her right there. If you like to read, you know, uh, stories centered around biblical characters, yes, that is what this particular book is all about. I'm trying to share the video okay, to all the ch channels. Please share, share, share. If you are joining us, please let us know in the comment section that you are here and where you are watching us from. I can see people watching, so please let us know that you are here watching us, where you are watching from, and if you can hear us clearly. Yes, I would like to know if you can hear us clearly. Okay, so I'll wait for someone to give us the thumbs up that we are all good, that the coast is clear, and that everyone can hear us well. Yes, I can see some, more, some people watching, not just one person. So please, let's know, let's know, let's know. I'm trying to share. Anyone there? There are plenty of people low. Please leave us a comment. I want to be sure that the sound is clear before we go on. Okay. All right. We have Odewale David. Uh, Ola Sundun Busola is here from UAE. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting us know that we are audible. Yes. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, we will just go straight into the program of today. We'll be talking about an amazing book. I'm still trying to share to other channels. Give me a minute. Okay, I'm trying to share to my guest page. Okay, I've done that. All right. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the book Untamed. 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 Thank you, Iyade Bukudokas. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Oluwaye Misi Ajila. Thank you so much. Audible enough. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, thank you. It won't be a show if we are talking to ourselves. So I'm really grateful. I appreciate the fact that you have joined us this evening. Yes, we will be talking about something really interesting. Uh, we, at one point or the other, were all teenagers. We, at one point or the other, have to deal with teenagers. So this is something that is really of uh, concern or a very sensitive you know, topic to talk about, teenagers. You know, when people become teenagers, the way they begin to behave can just be something else, right? So um, we have a teenage minister right here who has written amazing books to teenagers. She has written three, yes, that I know of, and Untamed is just one of them. And it's also targeted at teenagers. So quickly, before uh, we go into discussing the book, let's quickly meet up. I have the shortest biography I have gotten since I started this show. So I'll just quickly read. <laughs> Let's meet my guest, Oluwa Yemisi Lawal. 
She partners with God to minister to teenagers across all denominations in the body of Christ. She's an author and a convener of diverse teenage programs. She has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and a master's degree in environmental management. She lives in Lagos State, Nigeria with a beautiful and amazing family. Thank you once again for joining me on the show today. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. So we go straight into it. Um, you know, I always like to talk a little bit about the person before we start talking about the book. So um, can you give us um, or tell us why you found or how you found yourself in the teenage ministry like why have you focused on teenagers what led you to focus on ministering to teenagers in particular okay so um once again i'm so excited to to be doing this and um my prayer is that all of us will be blessed including me in jesus name amen <laughs> okay so I would say that um, I grew up in, in a proper Christian home. You wake up in the morning, you are praying, absolutely, you mm. pray. Yeah, we want to eat, you pray. When they buy you shoes, you thank God. Like it was just prayer, 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 prayer all the time. And mm. in the church, my parents were taking roles as leaders in church. So automatically, I have to be of best behavior. And then um, mm -hmm. I had other colleagues who were in the same um, team like me. We were really under 10 years old. But as mm -hmm. we grew older and um, went to secondary school, we discovered that we wanted to be something different from what our parents wanted us to be. And um, that was the beginning of war for most of us. For some of us that were naturally gentle, they didn't see what we were doing. But for some of us mm. that were open with our behavior, people did a lot of things. People got pregnant, people became really bad people. There was no relationship between when they were young and when they became older. So I found out that the way we live in our teenage years, from age 13 to 19, has a great influence on who will become afterwards. And the way we have been living before those teenage years, or the way we have been instructed, can also inform what becomes of us in those teenage years. And as the system is going, it is no longer, you are still in secondary school in all your teenage years. People are graduating at 19. It means that mm -hmm. from graduation, they are going into the workforce. They are becoming adults of their own. What has their lives been shaping to become? So as um, God gave me the privilege, I, I wasn't so much of a bad girl. I was just in between. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I had so many people <laughs> who, we, who we did teenage school together and um, they are not so proud of what they have become. And they've also offered to help other people, other young people to make the best use of those years. So as God gave me the privilege, he put it in my heart as I think 17, 2013, to minister to teenagers in my local church. And mm. a lot of people came from other churches and we asked God for provision and he kept providing and we were increasing the numbers, they were volunteers. So that's how I got to where I'm at today. And I think that's the only thing that I would do for the rest of my life and not worry about not being paid for it. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Thanks for sharing your background with us. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, just to know that all of us have a past. We have somewhere we're coming from. And God has a way of, you know, using our past as a tool in ministry, you know, in whatever he has called us to do in life. If you don't have a story, you, uh, uh, how would I put it now? The, you might your your ministering to them might not carry so much weight because you don't have mm -hmm. a story per se you don't have any experience but when you have mm -hmm. a story to share they will relate they will listen when you tell them mm -hmm. oh i was also a church girl i was this i was that i was that and then they will oh really are uh, you looking really you know like that and they'll just reckon with 
you somehow. So sometimes God really allows us go through certain phases, certain situations in life for the greater good of where he's actually taking us to. So thank you so much. Um, is there, like you mentioned, is there a room for uh, volunteering or something like that in your ministry? Yes, always, always. Oh, okay. I, okay. I don't have a permanent team of people except my husband and okay. my students. So if there is an event, we usually ask for other teenage ministers to join. Since it's oh, not awesome. any denomination, it's not any group of people. Wherever God opens doors, we want to just go okay. minister to people and um, trust God for increase. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, um, let's now go into the book. Okay. Yes, yeah, so why do you write Untamed? Why Untamed? <laughs> and <laughs> you have written a story, or you have written a book centered about or around characters that are not very popular. Okay, let's yeah. say somewhere, Samson is very popular. Samson is okay. a very popular man. Who doesn't know Samson? <laughs> but someone like Dinah, you know, like what even informed your choice of those characters? Why did you decide to focus on Dinah and Samson? Okay, so I'd first written them um, on rap before on things. And um, on rap, I was just talking to parents and um, teenage ministers. But I was thinking, all these people I've heard words before. Let me talk to the people that actually need the word. But I didn't have a topic. I didn't have a direction from God. I didn't know what to write. Then I was pregnant of my baby. And I was thinking of a name to, to give to my baby. So every day I was always checking the Bible. I didn't just want to give a name because everybody says Samuel is a good person. Or because Joseph, mm. Joseph is a good person. I wanted to know each Bible character in all their fullness. Then I now got to the book of um, Judges. I was now wondering why people say Samson the strong and not talk about the other part of his life. Mm -hmm. Like, why, why were they focusing on just one part of his life? And when people name their children Samson, they still now have to explain how you should be Samson type A and not type B. Why do we have to do, <laughs> to do the explanation? And then Dina. Dina was supposed to be a special girl. Like, Dina should be a female name that we all run after. Like she was mm. the only girl in the children of Jacob. Maybe a nation would have been named after her. So a mm. tribe in Israel mm. would have been named after her. So how did somebody just show up as a special girl and just disappear? Like nobody heard anything about mm. her anymore. We don't even know whether we should bear Dina in um, Israel today. So I, I started searching about the scriptures on those two characters. And as I learned more, I told God, I cannot just be learning this alone. All the mm. teenagers that I can tell me to hear this. And for every day that I was ready to write, God gave me a new perspective to it. Anytime I pick the book to read, I don't believe that I wrote the book. Because I can't believe that those old things existed about those two characters for years. And we didn't learn about them in Sunday school or teen's mm. church or anything. So that was our own thing. Mm. To be. Awesome. Thank you so much. So Untamed basically is a result of, you know, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you yes. know, reading the story, you would, you would have a special connection with the characters in, you know, a unique way, like different from what you just read in the Bible, like the way you just read the story of Dinah, for instance, and and just like you said, we don't have many people named Dinah. My pastor's wife is named Dinah anyway. Apart from her, yeah. I don't think I know any other person that is named Dinah. People like run mm -hmm. away from that, uh, from that <laughs> name. <laughs> At least I still know a number of Samsons. Maybe mm -hmm. because just like you said, we have Samson type A and then Samson type B. So they just covet Samson type A. You say, my child or my son will be a strong man, no. But uh, you know, type B, I bind the devil. <laughs> it will not be his portion. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So yes, thank you so much. You know, when when the spirit leads us, he leads us into 
terrains that are not um, common sometimes. It just mm -hmm. inspires you to do something that is totally different from the norm, from what, you know, everybody is used to. And I thank God for you yielding to God to, you know, birth this amazing book, this loaded book, this wonderful book that you have put together. Yes, so basically, who should read Untamed? So, at, at first, I was thinking that only teenagers should read Untamed. But I've discovered that for every chapter in that book, all, everyone can relate with it once you are not yet dead. Once you realize that, you, what, what way about am I from? Is there a covenant that is attached to my life? Am I fulfilling that covenant? Am mm. I walking away from it? Is God a God of second chances? If those questions apply to anybody, they should pick that book and read. But right. because we believe that in our teenage years, we have a lot of years ahead of us to become something. That is why I would say, oh, the first person that I'll give priority to is a teenager. But if you believe that there's still a lot of years ahead of you to do what God wants you to do, then on team should be in your library. Yes, yes, I agree, 100%, like, I agree. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, so um, let's talk about parenting a little bit and how it affects, you know, how young people turn out. Um, so what is the role of parental upbringing? You know, we are in, a, in such a age or such an age that parents, so many parents don't have the time to sit down with their children like once the child they are just waiting for the child to enter gs1 they will send the <laughs> child to body school like straight mm -hmm. i don't have the time we can't you know like that and even those that stay with their children they, they rarely see them or they rarely have the time the chance get the chance to you know speak with teenagers and I know that teenagers, they want people that will relate with them. So mm -hmm. what is the role of parental upbringing or what can parents really do to help teenagers, you know, turn out the way they should? Like, I hope you understand my question. Yes, um, Okay, all right. Shoot. Okay, so the first most basic thing I would say about parenting is that parenting is spiritual is spiritual like from the day you give birth to in fact from the day you con conceive inside of you and you know that you are pregnant you would know that parenting is spiritual because um um i i i have a three-year-old he doesn't even know instructions yet but sometimes he just wants to throw tantrums he doesn't want to eat. and i'm stressing and i'm crying sometimes how are you not eating why are you losing weight then the day I found out that I can tell the Holy Spirit that this boy is not eating, she's helping to eat. And I'll find and I'll say that if we eat the next within time, then I found that parenting is being so You pray about mm. everything. And somebody mm. that doesn't have time will not will not have time to even be spiritual, to pray. Right. So right. that takes you to the second thing. If you are not ready to be a parent, don't bother to be a parent. Mm. For every child you want to, to sit down and conceive. You should ask yourself, am I ready to, to commit to this? Are you ready to take a lesser pay job that will give you more time for parenting? It is a calling, it is a ministry. Knowing that whatever you do with these kids, God will ask you, what, mm -hmm. what did you achieve? We sent this person to you, what did you achieve? Look at all the characters in the scriptures. Whatever they became was said to them by their parents. If you are not there to say, what and who will they become? Who will influence them? The all of us are like um, like a plain table when, when we are giving birth to. That is why you can give birth to any child anywhere. If the baby is going to say a carol or the baby is going to say bonjour, it depends on the parents. It is what you say that the baby will say. Right. It's the first, their first words are what you have been saying. So if you are not ready to commit to it, you shouldn't be there. And once a child comes, you should realize that this is my child. This is my call. This is my work. I was telling somebody who is a full-time housewife. I said, when next somebody asks you, what do you do for a living? Don't say you don't have a job. You are a 
you are a mom and that is yes. what you are doing you are spending mm -hmm. time to ensure that these kids turn out well you look at them every day you see physical growth you are telling yourself i'm doing well you, they know mm -hmm. abc today you tell yourself you are doing well that is your job so parenting is spiritual parenting requires time parenting takes commitment and you must realize that parenting is a full-time job like a job mm. that you will not stop doing even until you die apart from the fact that i'm i'm a parent now my my mother still sees me as a child and still labors oh. on me and still say oh <laughs> sometimes i should tell her that this i'm married average the question is, where you are going away. it looks it looks really ridiculous but that's right. what parenting should be about mm. you should know that we should always be there we should mm -hmm. always be there Wow, thank you so much. Yes, uh, parenting is not something we can joke with at all. It's a ministry, just like you said, it's a calling. It is a calling and it is spiritual. Yes, we can call to be what we want in the lives of our children. Yes, and how can we do that when we don't even have a relationship with God? So mm -hmm. it first of all starts with us as parents. We must do what we must do, which is to mm -hmm. start by having and building a proper relationship with God. Uh, God is our mentor when it comes to parenting. I always like to say that. He's our mentor. You know, God is the perfect parent figure. He labors on us. He watches over us. He, you know, guides us, gives us instructions, disciplines us when he needs to, and stuff like that. So basically, I pray that God will help parents, you know. Amen. Uh, we won't really... Sometimes I, I try to be as... Um, uh, how will I put it, like empathetic, empathetic enough to just look at it that, okay, the economic situation and stuff like that is making or driving parents into doing stuff that they really do not want to do. If they were given an opportunity or if they had a choice, so to say, they won't be doing what they are doing. But, you know, they have to put food on the table still. But then I think wisdom is profitable to direct Yes, and there are certain sacrifices you have to make. Like, um, I know it's your book we are talking about, but it just occurred to me. Let me just share something about my mom. For instance, she's a nurse, and she had the opportunity to travel out at a point. But she, for her to travel out then, she had to leave us behind. But my mom ditched that opportunity. Like, she left the opportunity. She was like, no, I can't leave my girls. I can't leave them alone. And that singular sacrifice, when I look back today, I believe strongly I, that if she had left us behind, we wouldn't have turned out the way we turned out. We couldn't have turned out the way we turned out. It's not possible. It would have been terrible because she was always there, you know, monitoring our goings and everything, watching over us spiritually, physically. Like, she was so connected to us in a way that if myself and my sister fought in uh, in boarding school you just see my mom like the next saturday she'll come <laughs> and visit and say what happened between you and your sisters like it was that serious yes but she was watching over us like a hawk yes and she's just uh, like an example of a mother that i look up to and i be like see god will help me i'm not even doing as much as she is so as much as she did back then but i pray that god will help parents like seriously God will help us. It's not easy. We have so much to do. We have to help, you know, as mothers, you have to help your husband, you know, uh, you know, you, you can't do it alone. And we have to come together as, let me even ask this question now. Now, like many people think um, training a child is basically the job of the mother. What's the role of the father when it comes to training children? <laughs> that a mother should train a child is not spiritual that a mother alone should train a child is not is not spiritual it's not scriptural mm -hmm. the bible kept mm -hmm. saying in the book of, book of proverbs do not forget the instruction of your mother do not mm -hmm. forget the law of your father do father, a child right. like he kept he, I, I used to tell people that um i like when parents are together man and wife in the same house mm -hmm. it is very very important because a woman who admonish you, she will instruct mm. you, she will beg mm. you. A man will come with order, don't go anywhere. 
you need the mm-hmm. balance of these two in your life. Right. If your money is always begging you, don't do this, don't one day you you grow wings and say, I want to do it. The worst thing she will cry to the uh, but when a man comes and say, I say don't go there, you sit down there. As you grow up, you have a balance of two behaviors in your head. A behavior of somebody that is being taught and somebody that is being instructed. Mm-hmm. The reason why we have children who who just walk on their mothers anyhow is because there is no father to correct them. Mm. If a mother is talking to you and you walk out and the father draws you back Abby, you're in soup. and <laughs> arrange you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, when, when I was growing up, you do bad things. And my mom, she doesn't beat us all the time, bro. but she's always afraid of beating us because she'll beat you with the next available weapon. So she doesn't <laughs> like beating us. But when she says, I will report you to your father. Yeah, yeah, so so roasted. <laughs> Even when the man will come and not do anything, quote and mm. because it could just be, it will just ask you one question that you'll never be able to answer your life. But that, you say a father is coming, the child mm. would, would organize yes. themselves. So it mm. is very important that we, we both agree to parent. Right. We both agree to parent. It is more. It is now more than providing food or providing clothes and everything. Mm-hmm. Parenting has gone, gone really spiritual. We are at war with the devil, and right. that's what we need to understand. And we must join hands together to parent. To parent. Very important. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Really, I didn't plan to ask that question, but it just popped in my head, and I believe somebody needs to hear that. Our fathers need to hear that. Yes, we, our fathers need to rise to the task, yes, and do what they need to do. It's not just about the money. It's not just about, you know, paying the bills and um, doing all that. No, they need to do more. In fact, um, in one of my books, I wrote about parenting, and the person that the Spirit of God actually helped me to talk about when I was talking about parenting was Abraham. You know, God spoke about Abraham. He said, I know that mm-hmm. Abraham, he will pass this instruction. He could have passed it on to Sarah. That is to say that God wants fathers to rise up and do the work of parenting. You are the priest in the house. You are the one that is supposed to teach them the word of God, the way of the Lord. Give them the law, just like you quoted from uh, the book of Proverbs. So I pray that God will help um, our fathers. It will help our young dads, our old dads. It will help all parents, basically. In the name of Jesus. Okay, um, that being said, what what would you say to teenagers that um, have a warped upbringing already? Like maybe their parents are not there, they're just on their own, they are just living their lives like they want, you know, nobody really, they already lost that parental touch when it was necessary. What would you say to teenagers like that? Okay, so I would um, start from something you said earlier. Whatever it is that we have gone through is because of where God is taking you. So if a, a teenager has gone through a very terrible parenting period, of course, first of all, everybody needs Jesus. They need Jesus. They need to come in contact with Jesus. It's Jesus that gives life meaning. And it takes me to the second thing to say that parenting is more than, oh, I was in the labor room or I carried you for nine months. God has blessed us so much that people, people just adopt you in their life. They look at you and they say, I want to be part of your life. So mm-hmm. God, will, God will definitely put someone in your life who will be ready to be like your parents if you are mm-hmm. willing and yielding to that person. I lost my dad in 2010, March, but around January. So I, I used to tell people that my parents are both biological and spiritual to me. So when people have spiritual parents, I wasn't so much in sync with the idea. I think your parents should just be everything. But that was because I had not seen the other side of, of life. So in January, this man of God approached me and he said that he would like that. I listen to him whenever he advises me. I'm like, excuse you, like, 
who are you? Who are you supposed to be? <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> I, like, mm. I told him, I said, I have a spiritual father already. He's my father. <laughs> so he said, it's okay. But in the journey of destiny, I want to be there with you. I said, this is my first. I said, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so when I lost, <laughs> when I lost, you must dad, do. <laughs> so like, it, so it is stress. It is stress. He just told me that the Lord would um, speak to me. Um, I, I told myself, don't worry. The Lord has spoken to me. You already gave me a father. Mm-hmm. When I lost my dad three months later, mm-hmm. you know, I felt really alone. I felt without covering. I felt. I just felt like, like the whole world was coming on my head. When he heard that I lost my dad, he came with his wife to share his condolences and he left. And he didn't talk about that matter anymore. But when I needed a father, I needed somebody because now my mom was a is now a widow. She's a bit broken. She expressed him to also be strong for her. There were topics, there were situations in my life that I could not share with her. So I needed somebody who I could talk to and I remember that God had sent someone to me previously that I didn't break himself, so I had to go back. So for a teenager, who thinks that, oh, this is like so lucky, she has parents, that's why she's like this. God has a provision for you. It might not be people who directly or biologically give birth to you, but there is right. someone in your life. There is a consent sister in church, a consent brother in church, who is there to guide you. And you, you right. just have to submit and listen. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that practical, you know, example, practical experience. Yes, so uh, some people blame their backgrounds, like young people, they blame the fact that, okay, I'm coming from a poor background or otherwise, I'm coming from a privileged background. Like you see some young people, because they are coming from wealthy homes, they talk to people anyhow. They, you know, just behave rascally, like they don't care and stuff like that. How do you relate with such teenagers, you know, that their backgrounds are already rotten? Like, how do you deal with such teenagers as a minister or somebody, you know, like, I would like to learn. I walk among teenagers amongst young people they can be so rebellious like teenagers that might even meet you on the stairway and they, because it's a private institution of course if you are coming to a private institution that means i mean a private university that means your parents at least they have small change in their hand and so they would even want to climb on the stairs that almost hit you like <laughs> who are you i can pay your salary you know something like that so how do you deal with such um, young people okay so like I, I hate to say it, but the first thing I should tell myself is that I can't save everybody. I'm not sent mm. to everybody. It is a right. very peaceful place that you must be as a teenage minister because mm-hmm. there are people that you plant now, but you will not see harvest in their life. And they will grow up. That is when those seeds will begin to germinate. Now you right. begin to see them as rebellious. You begin to say, you even begin to doubt that God called you because you will use mm. all the methods and ideas that you know, you will not just be penetrating to them, mm. but you just keep planting. Jesus loves you, you pass away, you do everything. Right. So, the reason I don't have a biography is because I don't want to <laughs> grow up. That's the idea. Mm. I really don't want to grow up. I do, I make my hair like a small girl because I really want to look small. So, when I first get to a place and um, the teenagers first look at me like, oh, this is a teenager like us. Like, what does she have to say? To say. <laughs> so, what does she have to say? Like, all those wicked. And some, some of the teenagers think that their ministers are wicked. They just want to mm. give them instructions. They know it all. So, they already come with a guarded emotion. Bad, right. Like, you, you cannot just come and be back. So, I will mean, this with them. Like, oh, how is it? Are you on Twitter? Are you on this? You behave as if people are in the same page. One day, if you are their minister, they will get into a trouble and come back to you. Don't give up on praying for them. Don't give up on planting your seed. Trust God for harvest. 
harvest is not is not what we can give ourselves it is what god right. gives what we are meant to do is to plant we get worked up because we want to do the harvest by ourselves we should, we should not get worked up the need of everyone is different if you are in a class of 100 teenagers and only one teenager is yielding to what god is using you to do that is god's design for that time it doesn't mean the 99 are not catered for there is a planting going on in their life and one day yes. they will realize that oh everything that auntie used to say we've forgotten her name oh, mm-hmm. i think that mm-hmm. is it now so we should not get worked up because because of the various things that they will come back home right so the dark son yes. i think that's the worst that yes. can happen to anybody how can your child wake up and look at you in the face that i think you should <laughs> die <laughs> let's <you> get from us <laughs> <laughs> I cannot relate to that level oh of God. rebellion. Yeah. I'm telling you. Daddy, I think you should die. Let's share property. And your daddy was sharing property. You didn't change your mind. Everything I'm you telling went, you. No remorse, no nothing. Recalcitrant. Then you went. <laughs> it like... Hmm. But, hmm. you know, hmm. the future is so amazing. The Bible says, yeah. when he was coming back, while he was yet a power, his father saw hmm. him. Joe Spirit was telling me that his father kept sitting outside every day hoping for his return. He mm. knew that there was going to be, a, be an harvest. But, of course, he's not pushing it. Every day he's sitting outside and saying, my son will return one day. He kept planting. That is what we are supposed to do. That's right. right. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's the truth. You know, as teenagers, naturally, when you come with that forceful attitude. They want to rebel against it, like, naturally. Ah, excuse me, ma, don't tell me that to ah, <laughs> myself. I'm now a big girl. Ah, I'm now a big boy, you know. They want to show, just show themselves. So it's really from a place of love that we can reach out to them. We can't do it by our power, just like you said. It's we plant, and then it is God that will make the seeds to grow. Is the one that we water it, or we keep watering it, in our little way, but from a place of love, you know, mm-hmm. from a place of love. I pray that God will help us all. Yes, will help okay. us all. Because if if we have um, young children today, if Jesus uh, tarries in his coming, our children will become teenagers. Mm-hmm. And somehow, that's even if at all, at all, you don't have a ministry, you don't have a call to minister to teenagers, mm-hmm. but these are things that should prepare you for that face of life of your children. Okay, thanks so much. Let me just say thank you again to everyone watching. Thanks for staying glued. Thanks for staying with us. May God honor you. We are so glad to have you around us. Yes, um, gradually we'll be bringing the show to a close. But before we do that, I would like you to give us some practical uh, ways to give instructions or giving instructions to young people practical ways effective ways what are the practical effective ways of giving instructions to teenagers so um i think the first place where a teenager is supposed to receive instruction is first from the own so i would want to start with with the parents we, we are in the end time, it is no longer in news. And um, one thing I like parents in this age to know is that there is an evil spirit moving around for the spirit of disobedience and rebellion. And it is, it is that, I don't understand, the wind is so strong and it is fighting against whatever we are doing. So when your teenager wants to get an instruction from you, that spirit is standing right beside your teenager, trying to tell that teenager, don't mind your mother, don't mind your father. They are old people, they don't know what's going on. If you look at um, the generation of people that we have and those coming after us now, they, we want to force everything. Are you back? I can hear you. Day. Looks like the network is Can you hear me now? Is it from my hand? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello.
network that was a okay i think we are back now the network was hacking up oh okay Hello, they could hear you actually i think that may, probably the network issue was from my hand can you okay. hear me yes ma'am yes i can i can hear you all right please go on okay so one thing i i would like that parents should know especially when it comes to um life decisions life decisions and situations is that for every instruction you want to give now apart from wash your plate or do the laundry or or sweep the floor any major instruction about a milestone a teenager is about to take soak it in prayer soak it in prayer soak that instruction in prayer oh so mommy i'm going to university this and this it's all right so as they are going what do you want to achieve you ask questions and let them answer what do you want to achieve i want to be this i want to be that so what do you think you need to achieve those things they mention to you so what do you think can distract you from those things they also mention to you you hold them by those things that they said I remember when I did my PTP and um, somebody said they wanted to marry me at 17. I called my father and said, I already had a boyfriend at 17. He said, how would that help you? He said, how would that help you to be a doctor? Like, how is that driving your goal to becoming a doctor? And seriously, there was no relationship between my boyfriend and who I wanted to become. So they didn't say don't have a boyfriend. So for every stage in my life, I kept asking myself, this person, how is he going to add to my life? Or how is he mm. going to remove from my life? Mm. So that is where we are now. We are in a season of prayerful dialogue. You would have mm. soaked that decision in prayer. Then you come and have a dialogue with them. And when they give mm. you very horrible answers, you take the answers back to the Lord. And remember that the act of kings is in the hands wow. of the Lord. It directs like a flame that who, are now, who is your teenager? When God is directing out of the king, the exactly. is simple, God will do it. So we, we mm. are not in the age of don't wear trousers, don't do this, don't do that. Mm. You just want to give people a blueprint of story. They are looking at you. Once they leave your room, <laughs> they will do everything and more. Mm -hmm. They will do everything right. and more. But you show your decision in prayer. You have a dialogue with them. They want to be respected. Even small babies now want to be respected. Mommy, I don't want Mm. <laughs> either you explain why they should want it or they don't just want it so we are in a mm -hmm. terrible time we are at war that's what I keep saying we are at mm. war we are fighting we are fighting because the enemy knows how powerful they are the Bible says out of the mouth of babes and sufferings God has mm. perfected praise mm. he knows what God can do through young people so he wants right. to make sure that they don't become anything in the hands of God mm. Right. A man that is 60, a man that is 70 is already packing his, his um, load of purpose. He's already saying, hey, God, we're almost done with it. But somebody that is I'm 13, here. that is just starting, the enemy says, ah, this one has like 60 years. Let's make sure that it doesn't get to do 60 years during the will of God. Mm. So those are the people mm. you are dealing with as a parent. Those are the people you are mm. dealing with as a minister. You have to be prayerfully. Thank you so much. Prayer is key, it's key, it is key. You know, we, we deal with the physical from the, to be rooted right from this. In the physical is controlled in the spiritual. If you don't know how to settle it in the place of the spirit, you are wasting your time. And just like you said, we are in such a unique age. I would like to use the word unique, like, there are things our son or our daughter asked me to be asking my parents this kind of questions. I was like, I'm telling you to do this. And you're asking me, Ma, why now? Why should I do now? I was like, why are you hey, asking me questions? Things that I couldn't ask my parents when I was growing up. So indeed, the age is different. And we have to be dynamic. We have to allow the spirit of God lead us in dealing with these teenagers, in de dealing with our young people. 
And I pray that God will grant unto us the wisdom. We need wisdom. I tell you, we need Amen. wisdom. We need wisdom. We can't do it by our own power. We need the strength of God. Thank you guys for joining us on the show. Thank you everyone that has stayed with us on the show today. We are coming to a, the close or to the end of the show gradually. But Sister Yemi, see, how can people get this book, The Untamed? How can mm -hmm. they get the book Untamed? I know you gave a lo lot of it out <laughs> free. <laughs> I don't know if we still have copies for people that might want to get and it's Christmas. You should get this as gift. So how, how can we get the book, please? Okay, so um, I'm going to um, leave my phone number and um, maybe my Facebook page so that people that want to use the Facebook Messenger, I'll leave the details with the, okay. with the host. So um, okay. the Lord has miraculously, miraculously paid for all the printed copies. I think we have just about 800 or 150 left. So if anybody needs, you discuss your strength of teenagers, how many teenagers you have, and how many copies that I think that I'll be able to give you. But you arrange for the logistics by yourself. The books are free by God's grace, but you just make arrangements for how it gets to you. If you are in Lagos, I'm in Lagos, you can use a dispatch rider. But if you are in any other place apart from Lagos, we would have to use um, any other logistics arrangement that is available. And for people that are outside Nigeria, I think I can send you e copies of the book just to, to use in your maybe teens church or book clubs you want to read. They are very short story books, so right. they shouldn't take time. You can you can have the story in an evening over over dinner, just have conversations. So I can send you e copies to to minister to, to teenagers or to read and bless your bless yourself. The goal is for everyone to have this um, word of God with them. So as many people as possible that want it, they should let us know. Even if the cup is finished, the God that provided the five days of bread and two fishes, we trust mm -hmm. him to provide more to friends more. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate God for your life. You are such an amazing vessel. And I pray that you will not become an abandoned vessel in his hands in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't know if anybody has any question, but if uh, pending the time we get any question from anybody, can you please just give us a parting word? to parents, teenagers, you know, anything that the Spirit of God is laying on your heart, just tell us before we close for the day. So, um, because um, I've, been, I've been in a very, very wonderful mental state for about a month, looking at the um, situation of the country I live in and the situation of people around. I was telling my husband about the revelation I had last night how there was so much farming in the land that I saw carcasses of animals and even human beings on the road, littered on the road, and how people were robbing themselves of food items to eat. That was how mm. much I saw. It was a very terrible revolution. And mm. this and more situations will lead us to want to do more, to take extra jobs as parents, to look for more sources of income, to relocate to other countries in search mm. of a better life, in search of a greener right. pasture. We are in a season where we cannot afford to do anything without asking God. Where mm. you are going, is God asking you to go? Where you are relocating to, is God asking you to relocate? You are going mm. to a country where they don't permit you to beat your children. Is that God's idea for you? Will you work for the kind of children you have? You are mm. going to a country where they don't ask you to call yourself parents. You are guidance. If you need be, mm. they can mm. carry mm. you. Is that God's provision for the children mm. that you are still begging God that they should stop misbehaving? We, we should not allow the current situation of mm. the old world to push us anyhow. Let's mm -hmm. learn to hear God as parents. Let's learn to hear God as teenagers. God, what do you have for me? It is hard to wait when you are waiting mm -hmm. on God. But look at the big picture. The Bible says he has an 
expected end for you. Mm. The end that he mm. has, you don't know, but you know that he has an expected end. Right. So I would, I would admonish us. We are, we are the only friends we can keep. The Christians are the friends that Christians can keep, and that is why I'm talking to every one of us, especially as God's children. This is the time to seek God more on everything. You are raising a family now. Before you start popping out babies, ask yourself, am I ready to commit them? Mm. If you are not ready to commit, make sure that you are not popping out extra babies. You are not costing mm -hmm. more edit for the world. Mm. Do your best. Do your best, but trust God to do the rest. It is God that brings others. It is not the job that you do. People are mm. losing their big jobs. People are mm. losing. So it is not mm -hmm. about what you know how to mm -hmm. do. It is what God yeah. teaches you to do. The Bible says in the same year that there was famine in the land, Isaac reaped mm. a thousand food. Mm. God's provision, God's idea. If he had left, we would maybe be in another country barely trying to survive. I pray mm. that God will help us. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. That was one powerful, you know, admonition. Yes. God above everything god must be at the center of everything at the center of our decisions and you know the rave of the moment everyone just wants to disappear from our country mm -hmm. like catch the next flight and in fact mm -hmm. any country as long as this shall not this country i shall <laughs> just want to <laughs> you know i I was sharing a write-up I found on the internet, like somebody on Facebook wrote, and I shared it with my husband. You know, I sent it to, I was really disturbed, and I sent it to my husband on WhatsApp. I was like, can you just imagine this? The first thing he said was like, who popped this? I was like, who, who spewed this out? Who threw this out? Is this a child of God? Like, are you a Christian? You know, and the person is supposedly a child of God. I pray that God will help our, our, our generation. We need the help of God. And indeed, just like you said, we are in the end time. We are in the end time. The devil is all out at war against humanity. He knows his time is almost up. And I pray that by the grace of God, none of us will be his victims. We will Amen. not lose focus in the name of Amen. Jesus. It's been an amazing evening. Yes, I've had a wonderful time chatting with you this evening. Thank you so, 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 so much for, you know, an amazing and an enlightening uh, session. Uh, yes, full of humor too. I like it. <laughs> like I used to tell my husband, I say, when people look at me, they'll be like, oh, this lady is very quiet and everything. But when I start talking, I was like, the words will just start coming from my mouth. I will not know. And I'll be making people laugh. So we thank God for everything. Thank God for inspiring us to minister. And I pray that everyone that watches this, what God wants them to grab from this, they will not lose out of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that joined us on the show. I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Odewale David, I believe he stayed with us right from the very beginning. God bless you real good. Thank you, Iyade. Um, Iyade Ibukun Dokas, thank you, Mrs. Hajila, thank you, my darling husband, Engineer Moshebi, thank you very much for your support and encouragement all the time. Yes, thank you, thank you, everybody. I pray that the Lord God will bless you and keep you in this new week in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as this year is going gradually to a close, I pray that his protection will be sure over our lives in the name of Jesus. And we speak Amen. for the word of life into the lives of our teenagers, our young people everywhere. I pray that the most high God will visit them, will grant unto them the heart of flesh, the heart that is willing to receive the instructions straight from the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. And our own seed will be an example, even in the world, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. An example of God's grace, an example of God's blessings, and peace setters in where, whatever or wherever they find themselves in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. God bless you all. Have an amazing week ahead. And yes, Christmas is coming. It's going to be mm -hmm. an amazing <laughs> celebration for all of us in the name of Jesus. So two weeks... Mm -hmm. From now, 
there'll be an, another episode yes it's going to be different the next episode is going to be different i will tell you why later but yes the next episode will be on the 13th of december by god's grace i pray that uh, god will keep us all until then i really love to keep having you watch the show it's an encouragement and i pray that god will honor you all in jesus mighty name all right bye have an amazing week mm -hmm.